Good morning, it's Dr. Bob here. And while I normally talk about health and cannabis-related issues, today I'm not going to talk about cannabis, but I will still talk about a health issue that's affected me and for which I found some unique answers that I think other people might find beneficial. So a number of years ago, I really felt terrible. I had, had been sick with respiratory illness, and it just pyramided into like total weakness. And I realized that I had virtually no pulse. It turned out that my blood pressure was about 60 over 40. I went to the doctor and uh, cardiologist and was eventually diagnosed as having atrial fib. However, unlike most people who have atrial fib, I do not seem to have an underlying heart issue. It just seems to be more or less an electric issue rather than a plumbing issue. In any event, they put me on a beta blocker, and uh, the, the beta blocker, in turn, uh, restored a constant heartbeat. However, it, um, I'm having an issue here with another program that's interfering with this recording. Um, how, so I, I hope I fix that now. In any event, um, hang on one second while I eliminate this problem. I'm not able to eliminate this problem. All right, we'll just ignore the problem. Uh, in any event, I eventually realized, I was then put on another antiarrhythmic drug known as flecainide. Now, there are a couple of arrhythmic drugs out there that have been developed for exactly this kind of a problem. And arrhythmias in general, ventricular as well as atrial. However, it was subsequently discovered that people who were on these drugs and who, in fact, had the more common heart problems associated with atrial fib, uh, they, in fact, did not benefit at all from this drug treatment. And, in fact, there was an increase in mortality. In other words, people were dying from using the drug. Um, so, of course, I was not overjoyed with the thought of taking a pill every day for the rest of my life. And it, in fact, didn't control everything completely. So I started to realize that it was corresponding with the beginning of teaching and often with travel. And then I realized that it was being precipitated by dehydration. It's amazing how much water you lose when you get up and talk for an hour or two or three, as I do in my teaching. Um, and often when you fly, you wind up getting dehydrated. So I stopped taking my pills and I started to monitor my hydration levels. And in fact, the only time that I would go into fibrillating uh, would be when I was dehydrated. So that's what was occurring whether or not I was taking the pills. So by being careful and making sure that I'm always well hydrated, I can eliminate the problem, although every couple of months I screw up, uh, have a very dark urine, and I know that the next day I will fibrillate, and without fail, the next day I fibrillate. Then I go back on the flecainide for a day or two or three, usually, usually two, two to three days. Uh, it takes a while to build up. But I, what I do is instead of taking a half pill in the morning and a half pill at night, like I was supposed to be taking on every day, uh, I take one pill in the morning, it brings, uh, starts to bring the level up. I take another pill that night, and then another pill the following morning, and then usually I, I reestablish sinus rhythm. So it's just uh, my personal observation. It's how I'm able to control uh, this illness, this, this, this issue that I have. Uh, without taking drugs all the time by realizing that dehydration for me is what causes atrial fib. And I'm sure there are others out there with a similar issue. It's interesting because 
atrial fib is associated, lone fib related, where you don't have the underlying heart issue, is associated with people who jog, which I do, and living in the high altitude and very dry climate of Colorado, I'm wondering how many of those people develop atrial fib for the same reason I seem to, that being dehydration. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it.